It's Friday, April 18th, and it's time for your weekly recap. Leonardo from Facebook. Hi Chris, are there any different card tricks? I mean, a lot of them are like, take one card and now when I snap my fingers I will find it. For example, the ambitious card. And I'm searching something different to perform in a restaurant, so with only a little setup or completely impromptu. Thank you, winky smiley face. For this, I'm gonna refer you to the John Armstrong Card Magic series. This guy is really, really good at card magic and making card magic feel different. So even when he's doing a pick a card trick, it doesn't feel to the audience like a pick a card style trick. There are a lot of variations that he covers on different types of card tricks, so I highly recommend checking out this series of DVDs on card magic and such. Marco, what, in your professional opinion, are the three most important slights to master in card magic? Safely mice, I hope you like anagrams. I feel like this is kind of a dangerous question to answer because I don't think that there are three slights that are like the most important and going to be sort of a fix-all for all your magic. I use different slights to achieve the same thing a lot of time, uh, depending on the audience and the situation I'm in. The things I use the most probably are the palm, double lift, and some sort of card control. And I recommend, like I said before, having a lot of those because different people are gonna be looking for different things and it might be harder for you to get away with one card control in one environment versus another in another environment. Today I wanna to talk to you about the classified case. This is a fantastic case to carry your magic stuff around in. It looks professional, it keeps things secure, it keeps things organized, and it's, it's just the best thing around for carrying your stuff as, as a performer, you can use it in your show and, and have it, or you can put it into storage and your stuff's gonna stay safe if you're like a magic collector, or you collect decks or whatever. Lots of really great options in terms of how to set it up and it comes with an instructional video on how to set it up so that it looks professional and it feels right for you and your props. Click the link right here to see the video of the classified case, or you can go to magicgeek.com and check out all the specs on it. Paul, hi Chris, I can never find any good ungimmicked card routines that seem to move away from the ambitious card stuff. What are some classic tricks for a sitting down slash card table setting? Okay, so here are three really good ones, Red Hot Mama, Triumph, and further than that. And the interesting thing about all three of those is they can be found on volume one of Michael Amar's Easy to Master Card Miracles. That entire series is fantastic. I highly recommend you check it out. But just on the first volume alone, you're gonna find a bunch of really usable, great stuff. Gavin, hey Chris, I've invented a magic trick and all of my friends and family, Ash, that's it's their favorite trick. I performed even before I told them I made it. How do I publish it? Thanks, triple smiley face, big smiley face. Gavin said, not Ash. There's a few different things that you can do to sort of publish a magic trick. The first thing I would recommend is doing as much research as possible. And two would be, and a lot of magicians might disagree with me on this, but show it to some magicians because they might have seen someone else do something like it and you need to have that information before you start pursuing it. So I would show it to a few magicians, get their input, some trusted people. And then lastly, there are a lot of different manufacturers that take submissions and turn them into tricks. We're one of them. You can send us stuff at sales at magicgeek.com. Andres, can a standard size deck be suitable for entertaining people on a stage show situation for more than a hundred people with no camera and screen option on stage? If yes, what do you suggest? Smiley face. It depends on the trick. Manipulation stuff works great on stage. Fans and making cards produce and things like that. Standard tricks that you would do in a close-up setting have to be treated a little differently. So instead of doing your your turnovers and your you know stuff down here, you bring it up to here to do it. So it's it's more about staging. You can kind of manipulate almost any trick from doing stuff down here to doing stuff up here and it and it kind of helps out with uh, the visibility of the trick. Miguel, dear Chris, I can never get my Elmsley count right. I always flash the card I'm trying to hide. Frustrated upside down face. Can you give me advice? Thank you, smiley face. When you're having trouble with any slight, the best thing to do is to break that slight down as much as possible. So the first thing that I would do is learn how to get that first card off without disrupting this packet at all. So these, these cards that are left in your hand stay squared up as perfectly as possible. Then I get rid of this card, okay? Just get rid of it and just focus on the three and doing that push off move 
like that. And something to remember when you're doing that push off move, when you're practicing it, so that when you get that fourth card into place, is to make sure that you're holding the cards in this, this way here, when you start off, and then as you push, your fingers come down. And the reason you do that is because you need to pick up that other card. So there you go, just like that, okay? That combined with the pressure that you need to do this, and you just practice, practice this over and over and over again with no card in this hand. Just keep practicing that over and over and over again. By breaking down the moves one piece at a time, it's really gonna help you master the slight and then you put the other elements into place, like, a, like pieces in a puzzle, and, uh, and that's really gonna help you out. So today there's a bonus product that I wanna talk to you guys about. It's Mentally Exposed. This is by Romanos and Magic Tao, or Dao, depending on how you like to pronounce it. You could also pronounce it Teo, if you wanted to do that, probably. But uh, this is really fantastic. It's a lot of mentalism stuff, but in here is one of the coolest cell phone magic tricks that I have ever seen. It doesn't use an app, it looks totally clean, and it is absolutely amazing. Basically, you have someone pick a card, then you have people in the audience give you numbers and you type in a random phone number into your phone, hit call, the person on the other line is like, what, who is this? And you ask them to name a card and they go, I, I don't know, like four of diamonds, and it's the card that the person just selected. It is amazing, it's a fantastic trick. I highly recommend you check out Mentally Exposed. I can't wait to do this one out on the street. We haven't shot it yet, but I'm really excited about it and I wanted you guys to know about it before we, we even went out and shot it because I want you to get your hands on this before they sell out. Check this out, it's Mentally Exposed at MagicGeek.com. Harris, sup Chris, I've been doing magic for about eight years since I was about five and I have invented around eight card tricks. Is this good progress? Please answer. Smiley face, simple smiley face. Yeah, that's great. There's no real rush to the creative process. If you're being creative and you're, you're working on stuff and you're inventing stuff, it doesn't matter how many you do in a, in a certain amount of time. What matters is that you're happy with the end result. If you're happy with those tricks, then that's great. If you're not, go back and work on them some more. Write down ideas, put them away for a while, come back to them. Um, it, it's more about creating something that you're happy with than, than the amount of stuff that you're creating. Josh from the Magic Geek blog, does True Astonishment by Paul Harris come with everything you need to perform all the tricks? If not, could you please tell me what else I needed to do every trick? It comes with most of the stuff that you're going to need other than a regular deck of cards, there's not really that much that you're gonna to need to go search for and, and manufacture. I think there's maybe some matchbooks, some coins, but uh, no like standard magic props that you're gonna to need to go seek out. This week, if you use the coupon code SORTED at magicgeek.com, you're gonna get 5% off your order and your name's gonna go into the running for this trick, which is a fantastic trick. It's called Sorted Affair by Elmwood Magic. And, uh, you definitely wanna get your hands on this. It's a free trick and you get 5% off your order anyway, so it's a win-win. Go ahead and go to magicgeek.com, use the coupon code SORTED, get 5% off your order, and be entered into the drawing to win Sorted Affair. This offer ends next Friday, so you wanna go ahead and get your order in right away. Well, thank you very much for watching. That's all the time we have. Be sure to subscribe to Magic Geek Inc. Check out our other videos. We do one of these weekly recaps every week and it's all based on your questions. So next week, I wanna have questions about magic that you do with food. So if you have food related magic questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments section down below or on Facebook, Twitter, or the Magic Geek blog. We'll see them wherever you put them. And uh, hopefully I'll answer one of your questions. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next week.